Malawi in southern Africa is the 10th poorest country in the world. With few natural resources and an eroded landscape, Malawi has to rely on a few cash crops. Peanuts is one of them. Shelled nuts are the most valuable, but it's a painfully slow process. Now, a simple machine designed in the American peanut belt by inventor Jock Brandis can shell the nuts 60 times faster. I was in West Africa and I saw some women shelling peanuts. Their, their fingers were, were, at this point, rather raw and bloody. They informed me that they had to do this well into the night because that's the only product they were going to be able to take to market the next morning and actually get any real value for. And then one of the women there said when I, when I went back to America, could I find a simple hand-operated peanut sheller uh, and send it back to them because that's what they really needed? And I said, of course. North Carolina, USA is prime peanut growing country. In Brandis's adopted home state, there's not much they don't know about growing and processing peanuts. But if a hand-operated sheller had ever been used, Brandis couldn't find it. So he invented one, and then set up an NGO, the Full Belly Project, to get his shelling machine design into Africa. We simply make a factory in a box with really good instructions. The box gets sent somewhere, they open it up, and they can start turning out one, two, three, five, as many shellers as they want. The Full Belly Project supplied one of their box factories to Lamek Makutu of Sea to Sea Engineering in Lilongwe, Malawi's capital. When we looked at it, it was compatible with already what we do. The only difference being that the Full Belly products are cement based, but also with an element of steel work. So we just had to take the knowledge and uh, started producing the nut shellers. The assembly of the peanut shellers needs a little bit of uh, expertise. It has to be done by someone who can assemble them nicely, weld the pieces together nicely, so that they don't break when they're shelling. As a new product, most people don't know how to operate it. So we, we, we give the basic training on how to operate it, how to service it. The operation of the sheller is just by rotating the handle. So someone will be filling the peanuts, simple, it doesn't require that much energy. You can use it just by one hand and off. And here when you are shelling, because peanuts are in different sizes, there's some that is going to escape through and some that will break. So this has to be set so that you've got very little breakage. So you can do fine adjustment. If you lower the cone down, you are increasing the gap between the two cones, uh, so that will accommodate uh, bigger nuts. But if you can see here, most of the nuts they have come out complete, clean, nice. It is good and relevant. C2C engineering is oriented to help local farmers. So when we looked at the products, they were in line with our program, the way we do things. The products we do here, they are designed and meant to help our own local farmers here in Malawi. They have had to spend a lot of time to shell peanuts. So if you give them a machine, simple, manual operated, that is going to shell peanuts, it will free up their time. Then they'll have more time to do other productive things. Lifting people out of poverty often means lifting them out of subsistence farming. But in Africa, there are many obstacles. Disease is one of them. Aid worker Tim Strong explains how the sheller helped to save lives in the village of Chilongo. When I first arrived in the village, um, it was pretty evident that there were a lot of things that needed to be done, but um, the water quality issue was one of the biggest things right off the bat. I was drinking out of an unprotected shallow well, which had a lot of goat manure in it. Strong had discovered that Chilongo was actually in the grip of a cholera epidemic. I saw a color incident map and there was a little X drawn on the map. So you look at the map in the catchment area and there'd be an X here and an X there. And then when you looked at where Chuombo village was, it was almost completely black covered in X's. The local US embassy was prepared to finance a borehole if the community came up with 25% of the cost. In Chilongo's case, 1,500 US dollars. 
For Chilongo, it might just as well have been 15 million. But Strong remembered the peanut sheller and got hold of one. Threw it on the back of a bicycle and biked it out to the village. I think by the end of it, we did 16 metric tons. Um, and in two and a half months, we were able to raise $1,500 to support the community's contribution for the borehole. The borehole was completed with the rest of the money from the U.S. Embassy's self-help fund. Now, Chilongo has no more cholera. Before the borehole, we had a very serious problem with diseases, including cholera. But with the coming of the borehole, the people in the villages are safe and living a healthier, happier life. It's not only cholera that stalks this southern African country. One in eight of the adult population has HIV AIDS, and many children have been left to be looked after by relatives. Queen Elizabeth Nteteka looks after 14 children at her house in Lilongwe. I come from a family which was comprised of six children, and they all the rest are dead, and the only surviving person. So I have to take care of my, my late brother's children as well, and my in-law's children. So I thought of doing business so that I can make ends meet. I should be able to support the family and my, my husband. Queen, which is her given name, supports her extended family by making and selling peanut butter. She bought a sheller from C to C Engineering, and it's been a lifesaver. For me to be able to make a lot of peanut butter, I need to have a shelling machine. Because I cannot shell using my hand 50 kgs of granite in a day. It means I'll need more people, more labor force. Then you're going to use money to pay them off. But because of the machine, you only use one, one person or two people. The other one to remove the hassocks, the other one just to run the machine. So the share is really helpful. Once you buy this peanut butter, you come for it. If Full Belly wins a World Challenge prize, Brandis says it will use the money to streamline peanut production and processing. One thing we're trying to do is get away from the single machine and come up with a system. So people don't just end up saying, well, we've solved our peanut shelling problem, but now we need to figure out how to press them for oil or a better planting technique or a better irrigation technique. We want to have a whole system so that we can come in or someone can come in and say, here is a better way to grow peanuts from the first planting to the final product. Here's an entire system. So we still have some gaps in that system, and we're going to be happily spending your $20,000 on that. This time on World Challenge, we're giving each finalist a platform to appeal directly for your vote. We take subsistence farmers and we give them tools and they become entrepreneurs who produce food. And we do it all over the world really efficiently with these simple tools that can be built locally, they can be maintained locally. The people who build these tools become entrepreneurs on their own. We set up a system that takes care of itself. It's sustainable, it doesn't need your contributions in the future, it doesn't need big subsidies. We set it up and it runs all by itself. And that's why we need your support.